Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. RTX 40 is getting ever closer to release. And NVIDIA's Beyond GeForce event, which is going to be taking place during GTC, is going to be where the company reveals the architecture as well as several SKUs. This has all been officially confirmed, of course, by NVIDIA. In this video, then, I want to discuss not only the release schedule of some of the cards, specifically the 40, 80, and 70 is what I really want to focus on, but also some intriguing rumors concerning, well, basically path tracing capabilities of these GPUs. And this is courtesy of some leaked images of the boxes from Zotac of the RTX 4090. I wanted to discuss that along with some research which actually does back this up. And just as a bit of a bonus, we'll also be discussing some Nave 31 info as well. And we're going to get right into it, of course, after this message from the video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. Again, just to state what I mentioned in the intro in case you skipped it, the RTX 1490 as well as the architecture of NVIDIA's Lovelace will be basically demonstrated and shown off during the GTC event. Beyond GeForce has a lot of pressure associated with it because AMD will of course be revealing RDNA 3 shortly thereafter and it's going to be very interesting to see what the features are for RDNA 3, what the performance targets and so on are, but we'll discuss more about Nave 31 later on in the video. So let's talk about the release schedule. So the RTX 4090 is most likely going to be launching mid next month. Um, now there is an asterisk there and that's of the 4090 Ti. I've heard there's a possibility that both cards will launch simultaneously, but there's also a possibility it will only be the 4090. I'll talk more about that in just a moment when we discuss further the 4090 Ti's performance. But when it comes to the 4080 and 4070, here's where things get really interesting. So for quite some time, we've known that AMD will be uh, releasing RDNA 3 during mid-November. And RDNA 3 is going to be very competitive, I suspect, to NVIDIA. At the moment, I think NVIDIA may have a small performance advantage, but until we actually get official benchmarks with final drivers, <laughs> very difficult to honestly know how things are going to stack up and it's not just raw performance of course it's going to be cost it's going to be power consumption it's going to be features all of that other stuff is going to really kind of come together to make you decide whether you want to buy x or y gpu but one thing is for certain if nvidia releases all of their cards immediately it gives amd more wiggle room now of course at the end of the day Nv nvidia going first would only allow AMD to do so much. AMD can't just go back in and like redesign the entirety of N31, that would be impossible. But they could do things like, for example, uh, uh, affecting the pricing. They could maybe do small things to the specifications depending on the timings of everything. But ultimately, NVIDIA also have another major reason to delay the launch of the 4080 and 70. One is to kill some of the publicity of AMD's RDNA 3 announcements. And the other reason, of course, and this one's pretty simple, it allows NVIDIA to continue to sell through RTX 30 cards. So from my understanding, 4080 and 4070 both release um, mid next month. Now, interestingly, um, as I was putting this script together, there was also a post, um, I think I spotted it on WCCF Tech when I was looking at the path tracing stuff, which I'm going to get into in just a moment. And this is courtesy of Chip Hell. They are also stating the 4080 releases in November. They, they have no information concerning the 4070. I was told both GPUs are going to launch pretty much simultaneously. There may be a small delay, like say a week or something between them. And allegedly, according to the Chip Hell, 
file information. There's also going to be two SKUs for the 4080. That's going to be a 16 gigabyte and a 12 gigabyte. I'm not certain about that, but what I can tell you is, unless Nvidia changes things again, that is the current plan anyway. What about the 4060 and other lower uh, SKUs? So anything lower basically than the 4060. 70 so that would be the 4060 ti 4060 whatever that is almost certainly going to launch next year now again there is going to be a lot of decisions made i suspect based upon the inventory you know the supply chain and all of that stuff at the end of the day nvidia are starting to shift some of the surplus cards as well as amd because obviously they've really reduced the pricing and it's going to be very interesting to see how OEMs, for example, start to promote these things, especially when, again, the next generation cards get released. My personal advice at this point is, you know, if you want to buy like a flagship-ish product from either company, so that would be like a 40, that would be like a 70 series card or above from NVIDIA in particular, you know, and you're spending like five, 600 bucks, my personal opinion is don't buy anything unless you absolutely have to. Like if you're using your system for work and, you know, your, your main graphics card explodes and you really need to get a project done, obviously that's completely different from someone who just wants to see frames go brr. So talking now about the 4090 Ti, and we've actually seen a leaked Time Spy score of an RTX 4090, of course. That's scoring around 20,000 points. On chip hell, though, there is an alleged RTX 4090 Ti, and this SKU is getting around 24,000 points. It's roughly 20% faster than a vanilla 4090, and it's claimed that we can receive over 25,000 points. Now, Harakazi on Twitter did a nice comparison. You can see the graph on screen yourself. And yeah, it's roughly what you would expect as a performance difference between the 90 and the 90 Ti. Um, I suspect most gamers are probably going to want to go with the 4080 or 4090 SKUs. That's my personal guess. But the real question is, when does this get released? And ultimately, I'm personally thinking it's going to be roughly the same time as the 90. But I suspect one source told me that NVIDIA still haven't made a final decision on this. I was told by one individual it's going to be Friday. Uh, they may hold off the announcement. Honestly, I'm not quite sure at the moment on the 1490 Ti. It's going to be very interesting um, because there's even rumors, I think it was Kopitai 7 Kimi mentioned this, that there were even higher end SKUs that potentially could launch early next year. I'd personally heard from one person that there could even be like a, um, like a Titan level card, which would obviously have more RAM. I think it would have like I think it was 48 gigabytes if memory serves but obviously that would be for professional level use and it's not necessarily something that gamers would want to get their hands on um at the end of the day nvidia kind of do a lot of tweaking and shifting around of their plans so just because a skew is being worked on or planned now it doesn't mean necessarily that it's going to be available for launch or ever will launch so now let's talk about the path tracing rumors for RTX 40. Now, ray tracing, of course, is something NVIDIA bought in with their Turing architecture and then AMD embraced with RDNA 2. Ultimately, ray tracing enables just better looking visuals in terms of lighting. It's more accurate, shadows and all of the other stuff, but it can be used for other things as well, like even ray traced AI and sound. But we've discussed this ad nauseum previously. Path tracing, though, turns all of that up to 11. So essentially, rather than it augmenting traditional rendering techniques, it basically just throws it all out of the window, closes the window, burns the house down, and then goes to a different house and then sets up shop there. It basically means that the entire scene is being made up with rays. It's a really big topic, and ironically enough, I've been working on a really big project. I actually mentioned this a couple of people actually on Twitter there have been a few delays on the project not least of which that I almost finished the whole thing and then I found some more NVIDIA research papers and at the time I was fairly convinced that this may be for RTX 40 or maybe for RTX 50 Blackwell but it does seem like NVIDIA are pushing path tracing for RTX 40 and this basically is stated on the box. Now you can see the Tiger demo, which is playing in the background here. And this is running on a single RTX 3090. It's running at around 30 FPS, which doesn't sound particularly high, but there's a couple of caveats. First caveat is that all of this is real time. And again, it's path traced people. It's path traced. 
The second caveat is that this is with over 30 bounces, and a lot of that, of course, is due to the tiger's fur. The camera, as you can see, is fully dynamic. It could basically move anywhere in the scene. The jungle is absolutely monstrous. It's huge. And admittedly, of course, it's not like everything's being rendered at once. It's not like they're rendering the entirety of the jungle if it's not in view. But even so, this is really impressive stuff. Now, there are a bunch of other technologists that I suspect NVIDIA are employing with RTX 40. And I have heard through numerous sources at this point that A, the ray tracing cores are significantly better for RTX 40. That's kind of a no duh thing. But there are also numerous other improvements. The tensor cores have been bumped up significantly, but basically the whole software stack and there are numerous improvements across the board again i'm going to talk about this more in another video depending like it may just be worth at this point waiting until the official announcement but i might just release the video anyway as kind of a curiosity thing just to see what's right and i suspect some of this is also going to probably be more future technology potentially for blackwell um, so it's going to be very interesting to see how this works. I'll also be curious to see how long it takes for games to even leverage path tracing. Now, there are some titles that already do. For example, Quake 2 RTX basically uses the game engine from the 90, well, from the late 90s title, and then basically just replaces the renderer essentially with a Vulcan backbone. And then again, it's all path tracing. There are some also mods, I think, for Doom, which does path tracing. Um, but I think it's going to be a while before the average quote-unquote title on PC is fully path traced. It's probably going to be an option on some visual feasts, like, and I suspect there'll be some mods for some games, uh, some games which are highly moddable and then the engines well to doing this type of thing. At the end of the day, though, this is not going to be something that the PlayStation 5 or Xbox can do. So if you're a developer, which, you know wants to make a game for let's say the ps5 as like the lead and you're just porting a game to the pc i would love for them to put the extra time in to make it for the path trace but you're talking about a a lot of work for that and b um not everyone's going to have an rtx 40 card at launch but this is one of those things where nvidia needs to go first at some point because path tracing is probably going to be the future of graphics for gaming and of course outside of gaming it has other uses as well like rendering which is what the box seems to imply um you know for 3d work that type of thing again i'll be very interested to see how long this takes to become more widely adopted and i suspect that it's going to be very cool when it is uh you know at the end of the day people you know said that ray tracing in the rtx 20 series was just kind of a waste of time but within a couple of years we had quite a large number of games which did support ray tracing of course and at the end of the day you have to go first i wouldn't be surprised if the playstation 6 or something like that does really push um path tracing or ray tracing as capabilities but again that's just spitballing for me it's going to be very interesting though to see what nvidia announce here um, at the end of the day, of course, owning an RTX 40 series card is not going to mean that suddenly all of your games become path traced, but it will be interesting to see what NVIDIA do for like SDKs, what they do to empower developers, and of course, just to see what these cards are able to do. That is assuming, of course, any of this you know, information that we've seen here is actually accurate, although there are also photos of the cards themselves. There's not much to say at the end of the day. It's not like you can see, you know, the full specification or benchmarks of these things just based on photos. But yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a GPU. And now just real quick stuff for Na'Vi 31. And this is going to focus predominantly on the uh, TDP of the GPUs. So I'm sure most of you know the specifications now, which have been floating around the internet. You're looking at around 12,000 shaders. Uh, we've got six MCDs, 96 megabytes of infinity cache. That's doubled for the vCache variants of the GPU, although that's not going to be the average card. It doesn't seem like, you know, 96 megabytes is going to be um, what's really pushed for N31 just because of cost reasons and ultimately speaking these cards are going to be very impressive when they launch it's still way too early though to know what the exact performance numbers are especially when it comes to ray tracing I've heard so many different things 
it's going to be very interesting to see what is actually true and what is completely and utterly fake. But a very curious thing is to do with the TDP. One of the figures I've heard most is 375 watts, but I've also heard 395 watts, and now more recently 350. Now, to be very abundantly clear, we are talking about reference designs. The non-reference, in other words, AIB, you know, custom models, they can probably go higher. In fact, I've been hearing that they can go up to 450 watts. So this would actually mean that AMD's TDP targets are lower. They are um, only 350 watts. And I wouldn't honestly be surprised if they're true, given the figures that we've seen from NVIDIA and the fact that Many of them were kind of overblown. Again, I'm reporting this as I don't honestly know what is true. Now, honestly, AMD could decide to bump the, the figures up, uh, depending how much additional oomph this gives them. At the end of the day, just because you raise, you know, the power level going into the GPU, it doesn't necessarily mean that the clocks are going to go up. For just a very simple example, you could put in another 10% of additional power and the clocks might go up, you know, quite high there might be seven eight nine percent depending how close you are to the the sweet spot of the gpu on the other hand you could put 10 percent in and only get a couple of extra percent of performance and the heat just goes up through the stratosphere so it's very difficult to know what in, uh, amd will do but i have also been hearing that amd will be pushing n31 potentially for mobile now n33 and 32 is almost assured at this point um and it's going to be one of those things where I think that in AMD's partners are basically pushing for this. At the end of the day, NVIDIA, of course, have, you know, high performance graphics as an option as well. N32 is going to be pretty quick from all of the rumors that we've seen so far. So it wouldn't surprise me that AMD did do N31. It would obviously need to have some concessions just simply because of power reasons and all of that stuff. So I don't think we're going to see like exactly the full desktop implementation, you know, with all the same clock frequencies and stuff. But it's going to be very interesting to see what AMD do here to compete, especially given their APUs. Now, we've discussed Phoenix quite a bit, but I also just want to give you guys a couple of very small updates to the um, Strix point APUs, 16 RDNA3 um, plus CU, so that's eight workgroup processors, 3.2 gigahertz for the GPU clock. It seems like it's topping out still at eight um, Zen 4 cores. The performance target is 1.8 times that of Phoenix point. Of course, all of the clock frequencies on the GPU, for example, that's gonna be highly dependent on the, you know, the chassis it's in, uh, you know, how much power and stuff they want to deliver to it. So different designs and all of that will have a meaningful impact on performance. I do think, though, for AMD, low-performance GPUs are going to be pretty much thrown away, and they're going to focus on APUs, not only for the desktop, but, of course, mobile as well. With that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you did, you know what to do. Leave a like on this video, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves, and have an amazing day. Bye for now.